I've decided to look inside some boxes I've had in my garage since I moved into my house in 2009. This is all of my old Dream Blade stuff. Um, the stuff that's in these boxes hasn't seen the light of day in 11 years. Oh, not that one. That one down there. He's on the table here and then this stack right here. So I honestly don't know what all is going to be in here. I don't know what state my collection was in when I moved out of my apartment and boxed all this stuff up because, you know, the game obviously only lasted a year and it kind of died with the release of Night Fusion. And at that time, I had just suffered an apartment fire that destroyed part of my collection. At the very least, it destroyed my, my warband that I was going to use in the tournament in the Gen Con in 2007. So I'm very curious what's actually in these boxes and how complete my collection still is. I think we're going to see some stuff in here that might be considered a little rare by today's standards. Um, I am 99% certain there are some Scarab War Charms in here, including the alternate coloring that was available at some of the Edge tournaments. Um, I don't know if I ever had a complete set of Night Fusion. Um, so yeah, I'm going to start unboxing these things, and we'll see, uh, we'll see what I can find. Um, let me see if I can find a way to set this camera up. Hmm. <clears throat> I don't know if I'm going to just have to do this one-handed, or, or what's the deal here. Honestly, I think we're just going to cut these open. They're sealed with packaging tape. And uh, just be very careful here. Still sealed quite well, so I'm not really worried about any spiders. These have been in my garage since I've been in here. So this box went to my original address. That's my first apartment, and it's labeled Chrysotic Plague right here. So I don't, I don't know when I labeled it that. Um, but the box itself was a Chrysotic Plague booster. So I honestly don't remember the timeline of a lot of this stuff. Don't remember exactly when Chrysotic Plague came out. I don't remember if I was still in my first apartment then or not. I mean, I guess I had to have been because after the apartment fire, that's when Night Fusion happened. So yeah, the entire run happened while I was in my first apartment. So here we go. Big box of minis. I'm just gonna dump them out, but we're just gonna see what's in here. And I guess at some point I'll have to organize all this stuff. Uh, I have a lot of unopened minis because I used to just buy lots of these on eBay back when the game was current. Let's see if anything jumps out at me. I, ju I just don't remember what a lot of these are. Just at the moment, I'm... Oh, is that an in Infernal Gothic? No, it's not an Infernal Gothic. Whispering Imp. Yeah, I remember that one. Let's see here. Ghost of the Key. It's been so long. Oh, yeah, that was a uh, Seraph. I remember that saw some tournament play. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, the big head dude. What's this thing called? Freakazoid. That was it. So, is there anything in this box that really jumps out at me? Or this guess yeah, that was very... Bugged. Oh yeah, I remember Cage Crawl saw some tournament play. A little bit. see here succulent creeper yeah these got these got played in tournaments so i played in a kansas city sealed box tournament that was um i think it was chrysotic plague and i remember having to run these at the tournament because the problem with sealed box for chrysotic plague was that there just weren't a lot of small spawn minis to run and uh this wasn't an overall great mini but it was one of the few low spawn minis you could get so that tournament was won and lost on like just random luck drawing enough 
of the small spawn minis to be able to make a reasonable spawn curve in a warband. And I just remember a lot of people just lost at the time they opened their boxes because they just couldn't make an effective spawn curve. Oh yeah, this guy, the uh, little army man looking dude, Battle Weaver. This guy saw some tournament play too. But uh, I don't see anything in this box that's really jumping out at me as being amazing. So I think I'm just gonna box them back up for the moment. I think this is mostly Chrysotic Plague stuff. Yeah, sorry if my camera work here isn't the best. I'm kind of one-handing the camera. Put all the stuff back away. Okay, so not not I don't think the best box to start with. I mean, Chrysotic Blade was not the best set they released by any means. In fact, I think by many measures, it would be considered the worst in terms of overall playable pieces. That's not to say there wasn't some decent stuff in the set, but overall, Baxar's War had a much bigger impact on the game, as did um, Anvil Born. Um, so yeah, let's just move on. Uh, this one is labeled Anvil Born. It's much lighter than the others. Um, also addressed to my original address. I, I think I did order some stuff at my second apartment after the apartment fire. Um, so there might be some of these addressed to my second apartment. But, um, just kind of this. I gotta put the camera down for just a second. Sorry, it's gonna be dark there for a second. Gonna cut the tape on this box. Oops. Okay, so let's see what's in this box, box labeled Anvil Born. Well, right out of the gate, I don't see any Anvil Born. <laughs> Maybe I'm just seeing things. See, are these actual anvil born pieces? Yeah, they're definitely anvil born anvil born pieces. <sighs> da, 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 da. Wish I could remember where I got a lot of this stuff, you know. Warp strike. <sighs> Such a useless ability. <laughs> that was one of the things that really caused this game to, to downslide. It wasn't all just marketing. There were a lot of um, good on paper abilities, too many good on paper abilities that just uh, when you really got into the game and people started to work out what was effective and what wasn't, so many abilities just became worthless. Um, nothing here is really jumping out at me as being amazing. I definitely have not hit the remnants of my war bands yet. Um, this is all like stuff that I got probably after the fact, maybe after the game had already started to die and I just ordered boxes of boosters just because I, you know, I really loved the game. Or these could be unopened prize packs from tournaments. I honestly couldn't tell you. Let me uh, close this box up real good. Stack this one on top of it. Get it out of the way. Okay, so we got another one here. This one also sent to my original address. Clearly bought on eBay. This one's labeled Baxar's War. So this would be the first box I would think that might potentially contain like the remnants of one of my war bands because box ripped a little bit. That's okay. I, uh, throughout my entire time playing Dreamblade, I always favored Valor Passion, like aggro bands. So, let's see here. 
What we got? What do we got? Yep, there's an Infernal Gothic. Man, this piece was amazing. This saw a lot of play. There was a lot of great stuff in Baxar's War. It really changed the game. Uh, Ouroboros, I remember that. Ugh. The pieces that actually had like actively self-harming abilities they were so bad. Like there was a, a, a rare called Buzzkill Clown. It was so bad for, especially for a rare. And I mean, I've never seen an, a, a name more apt than Buzzkill Clown. Because when you opened a pack and you saw Buzzkill Clown, you, it was a Buzzkill. Oh yeah, uh, Arch of Triumph, I think this was called. Yeah, this piece was pretty good. It was all right. You, you saw some play. It wasn't the best. Last chances. So this pack, I'm actually taking a much closer look through. Bloodcut Behemoth. That's probably something I got at a tournament. I really hope I'm remembering how all this stuff played out. I mean, like, seeing all this stuff is bringing back a lot of memories, but, you know, I'm just wondering how much of it is, like, false memories or I'm misremembering how things actually went. Eagle Feather Warrior, yeah. That was a base set thing, wasn't it? I seem to remember Eagle Feather Warrior being from the base set. I've yet to see anything that would really get me excited, you know, like Heart's Blood Temples and Bloodhawk Barags and just old stuff that I remember playing a lot. Lunar Maidens and Virtuous Maiden or Lunar Hand Maiden and Virtuous Maiden. Um, the big pieces like my Rage Drakes. You know, all that stuff obviously wouldn't be unopened. So just going to kind of go through this stuff a little, a little quickly here. Wanted to get to the good stuff, you know. I don't know why I have... I honestly don't know why I have so much unopened stuff. Because back in the day, I actually tried to get a playset of every set. I would order boxes until I had three of every mini, even rares. And I achieved it for at least the first couple sets. I don't remember if I ever got there for Chrysotic Plague... But I know I got close, and I, I, I think by the time Anvil Born and um, Night Fusion came out, I was already aware that the game was dying, and I kind of stopped buying up as many booster boxes. But I don't know. Maybe I'll look into that. You know, Maybe it's worth going back and finishing. I don't know. Maybe I can convince someone to play, you know? Sorry. <laughs> I just realized I've been pointing the phone at the wall. Another Arch of Triumph. Sealed stuff, sealed stuff. I have to assume a lot of this is still sealed when I bought boxes and the only pieces I was looking to fill in were the rares. So these boxes full of sealed pieces, we're not going to find any rares in here, except maybe some crappy ones. Because I'm pretty sure they're still sealed because they're just pieces I had more than three of when I was ordering digging for rares. And probably some pieces, a few odd pieces here and there that uh, I picked up it as tournament prizes. Just want to make sure I kind of go through everything a little closely and make sure the boxes are labeled at least somewhat accurately. And so far, I think they have been. It just looks like it's mostly Baxar's worst stuff. So I at least did some due diligence when I boxed this stuff up. But still, nothing super exciting yet. I don't know how long uh, I'll be able to go on my phone here. I probably need to hurry it up a little, huh? So this one is labeled Base Set. Uh, again, so this one is actually addressed to my second department. Um, so this is after the game kind of officially died. And the Night Fusion had already been released by this point. So this is a box I bought after I knew that the game was dying. I was probably just looking to fill in some pieces in a set. 
Um, and I, at the time, I'm sure I was hopeful that, oh, no, the game's not actually going to die. They're going to, like, you know, restructure their tournament scene. You know, they'll, they'll pull out of it. You know, the game won't die. You know, maybe that was naive, but... <laughs> Oh yeah, it's Twilight Scout. This is definitely base set stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Night of Autumn something. Night of Autumn Gate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Flamazek Battle Lord. I don't remember that one. Twilight Scout. This is you could tell these are the base set because they have yellow text on them. I don't think any other set had the yellow text. Ooh, these definitely smell like garage. <laughs> I'm glad these aren't like super valuable by any means. Some of them are. Uh, so, well, to some degree, right? I'm really looking for things like Scarab War Charms, especially the alt paintings. And um, I, I know I have them. And some of the more sought after pieces, like I, I think Stained Glass Angel is considered like hyper rare now. And I know for a fact I have them. <laughs> I, I just know I do. They got to be in one of these boxes. I always thought this piece looked cool. Flame Harbinger. I like the ones that have the translucent color plastic. And of course, that's one of the reasons why Stained Glass Angel, besides being a rare, it just looked cool. So just kind of digging through right now, looking for anything worth pointing out. Again, I seriously doubt anything still packaged is going to be worth looking at because I pretty much unboxed anything worth using. Steelborn Lion, that was one of the reinforced blood cut pieces. <laughs> Doom ball, Mr. Explodey Pants himself. It was. It seems like a lot of people really praised this game for its design and say it was unfortunate that it just died because of marketing. And there's some truth to that, but there's a little bit of rose colored glasses going on there because the game was not without its faults <laughs> in terms of design. Um, madness as a as an aspect was useless, just absolutely useless. Um, its claim to fame was easy to disrupt, hard to destroy. The problem was is that you can't win the game if you can't keep your pieces in the battle. <laughs> and you couldn't keep madness pieces in the battle for the most part. That's not to say there weren't some madness pieces that didn't see tournament play, but they were always came as like a splash in other war bands. You never really saw a madness themed war band. Um, I'm sure we'll see some of them pop up here. Probably none from the base set, though, that I recall. The one that really comes to mind is um, Cyclopean Sprite. It's a really good piece. Like, it could change a game. In fact, it, it, it basically won me a tournament in Louisville. Where I splashed it into one of my Valor Passion decks. Um, ha, rocket Boots! It's not what they were called. They're called Slaughter Boots. But everyone uh, ran a warband. Very early on, there was a warband when it was just the core set. There was a warband called Rocket Boots that was based around two of these... Um, two, uh, two of these and two, uh, what was it called? Knight of Valor, which was a piece that could skirmish itself and an adjacent ally, but it, um, it couldn't shift into an occupied cell or a contested cell rather. Um, so you would like work to get two Knight of Valors and two Slaughter Boots into the same cell and then you would just use the double skirmish on them to just rocket them around the board, crushing everything. And it was called uh, uh, Rocket Boots. Rainforest Shaman was a good piece. It was a great piece, actually. Very good early on for spawn ramping. Um, it kind of fell out of favor after a while once their better options came into play. 
but early on it saw a lot of play with Heart's Blood Temple for ramping up to drop early Noble Dragons and stuff like that. It later got overtaken by Bloodhawk Bear. I guess a better way of spawn ramping, but... <laughs> Twilight Scouts, man, those things used to see a lot of play. So let me put this down for just a second. I'm going to box this up. Man, taking these out, putting them back in the box kind of fluffs them up so the box doesn't want to close anymore. So we'll just put those over there and move on. We've got another one here labeled Baxar's War. Um, again, addressed to my original apartment. And uh, let's take a look at what's in here. Another box full of mostly unpacked. And again, it looks like a lot of extra Baxar's War stuff. Um, oh, hey, looky, looky. Miss I Got Banned. The old Kitsune. I don't ever actually remember playing a Kitsune band. I thought they were really cheap. Well, that doesn't want to focus at all, does it? But uh, the one and only piece to get banned from tournament play, and rightfully so. Um, it wasn't that the piece itself was overly powerful, but the, it just caused a really toxic style of gameplay that just had to be removed from tournament play. I won't go into the details of it right now, but anyone who was there, they know what I'm talking about. <sighs> okay, we got some base set stuff in here too. Just kind of. Oh yeah, this thing was called uh, Castle of Torture or something like that. Citadel of Torture, yeah. They let you like. Sacrifice allies to get them spawn points or something. I don't know. Again, I don't think that I don't ever remember seeing that at a tournament. But then again, I never played at the very first tournament. Um, looks like there might be some prosthetic plague stuff in here too. This is more of a grab bag box and just random stuff. I'm sorry if this isn't terribly interesting. I know it's hard to see a lot of what I'm sorting through and trying to go through to find good stuff worth looking at, you know. The Kitsune is the first thing I found that was actually interesting. None of this, none of this. None of this. I'd like to get a shelf set up and get these things organized back out, you know. Pale Horse. I seem to remember these getting played in like drafts. They were okay draft pieces. But otherwise not super great. Thief of Last Chances looks a lot like Bloodhawk Barrag. I keep thinking that I saw that. Why is there a knife in here? That, that's the knife I've been using to cut things. Why is there a knife in this bag? What? Is that where my fifth, my sixth knife ended up? This set has been missing a knife for as long as I can remember. <laughs> Apparently, it was just in one of my Dreamblade boxes. Okay, cool. I haven't seen you in eleven years. <laughs> I guess you're going in the uh, another Kitsune there. I'm sure I have a play set of Kitsunis. After they got banned, they weren't really worth very much at the time. Temple Lion. Yep. Protect pieces were decent in drafts, but you really didn't see them very much in uh, organized play. Or um, constructed play, I mean. <sighs> okay. 
It's looked like mostly another uninteresting box of stuff. Uh, Marion Bone to Pain. Unique, unique one. It was unfortunate because there were like factions. Like other than the aspects, there were like factions within those pieces. Some of those factions crossed aspects. Like, you know, they, some of them would be like two colored. You'd see them in either color, but they really didn't do much with the factions throughout the life cycle of the game. Like the blood cut had a reasonable showing, and I think eventually a couple of the other ones got a little bit of love. But there were factions in the game like the Lost that just there was no reason for them to exist. They really didn't have any pieces that really made them function as a faction or synergize and they just never got around to doing that oh, this, this piece always looked kind of interesting faceless king is one of the translucent pieces i think this is actually the like i was just saying the lost i think this is the only one who actually did anything meaningful for the lost faction and it wasn't even that good it wasn't worth building a war band around it that's for sure So, okay. I need to hurry it up here because I'm going to run out of space on my phone. So, not much interesting in this box other than the Kitsunas. Um, we'll just shove these off to the side and move on. Now, this is a tall box. I have no idea what's in this. Is this even Dreamblade stuff? Uh, it is. And it appears to be mostly open figures. So now we're talking. Now this box is huge. I don't know if I can just dump this out. Holy crap. It's going to take a while to go through this. Oh. Holy crap. Okay, well, apparently... I just decided that it would be in my best interest to just dump a giant pile of figures in one box, mostly open. Oh, starting to see some Anvil Born stuff in here. Now, I do remember that if any of these pieces come out and they're, like, damaged and they're worth, you know, fixing, I do know that they can be fixed basically just with a hair brush to soften the plastic just enough to make them pliable. I remember people did that back in the day. I really need to dump out this whole thing, so give me just a second. Okay, this is gonna be a challenging one to go through because look at this <laughs> this is what was in that box so and i've only got about 11 minutes left so yeah so here boom anvil born great piece i ran blade millers in my uh, hunter killer band when anvil born came out of course still passion valor aggro but you know with some anvil born support really good stuff plus three spawn that was so crazy can only be used on spawn abilities, but who cares? So here we've got some of the uh, night fusion stuff where you started to see like the dual aspect maze. Duelist was kind of a cheap one. So I bet there's going to be some good stuff in this pile. Like maybe some stuff worth pulling aside. Angel Star Shrine. Empty bag. Just toss that. So let's see here. Oh yeah, Shimmer Sword. Shimmer Sword Merc. These guys um saw some uh like draft play and whatnot. Just because they were a decent power creature. Master Puppet, those saw some play. One Man Army. Eh. 
not really a great piece. Hiveling Royal Guard. Again, that's super exciting. Oh, there's a Bloodhawk Bear Egg. This piece was absolutely crucial and just meta-defining. It just absolutely shook up the meta with this. Coming out at the same time as the Rage Drake. This piece is just... You can see here this was one of my original pieces because it's got a little bit of water damage from the uh, apartment fire. Absolutely critical piece in the history of Dreamblade. Oh, here we go. Angel of Sunrise. I also ran these quite a bit. Angel of Sunrise, great piece. One of the Gambit pieces. You could just completely reposition your pieces. Pull them back to avoid an unfortunate spawn roll. Push them forward to take advantage of an advantageous spawn roll. This could just absolutely change the state of the board in your favor. And again, games hinged on this piece. This is the top to a Baba Yaga, which... One of the only, piece, only pieces that kind of came apart. So, very cool to find an Angel of Sunrise. I, I know I have all kinds of neat stuff in here. It's just a matter of finding it, you know. So, let's see here. Yeah, this is all my open, or a lot of my open stuff. So this is the stuff that would have been on my shelves and used in my war bands. Um, and as a result, a lot of this stuff is going to be water damaged. And hey, look at that. Stained glass angel. Now, it is bendy, but it can be fixed. And actually, this one is undamaged. So there you go. This is one of the sought-after pieces. Put this down for just a sec. I just want to... Take a quick look at this. I'm actually going to set this aside because I probably have more of them. <laughs> um, let's see here. Skullpunk, kind of the cannibal pariah of Night Fusion. Not a terrible piece. It served. It was a great piece for satisfying aspect costs because it was dual aspect. Oh, there's the Baba Yaga hut missing its top. And another one missing its top. I assume they'll mostly be missing their tops. Bewitching Assassin. I think I remember that piece. It would take a long time to sort all this stuff back out, but I think I'm up to the task. Oh, here's an anvil born. Mantlet. The, like, shielding one. Let's go see if I can find any of the dream boards. I, I know I have some. Let's set these angels aside for the moment. It's a little hard doing this with one hand. Um, Bloodcut Champion, this was a good piece. One of the Passion Valor pieces. Especially, Bloodcut did not need more love at this point, but they got it anyways. Being probably the only faction that saw any real tournament viability as a faction. Uh, another windmill or blade miller. This one was a, a victim of the fire. You see, it's labeled as missing. Liable to see a lot of pieces like that. Um, I know in the fire there were several pieces buried in the falling ceiling that I never recovered. I did recover some of them. A lot of them I did not. So a lot of stuff I have is just stuff I got after that point. <sighs> so just kind of trying to move through here real quick here. Oh, 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Here, yeah, let's take a look at this one. Another uh, piece I really liked playing, Sun Titan. It was a, uh, it was a mm, suicide bomber, really. And it was like one of the few ways in the game to actually do like a guaranteed pile of damage, like just a set number rather than rolling dice. And that was a really good thing at the time. You could get really good value out of a well-placed Sun Titan explosion. Thing. Oh yeah, yeah. Cryptworm. It was a Fears Gambit piece. Kind of the opposite of the Angel of Sunrise. It let you move your opponent's pieces instead of your own, which you could really screw with their positioning that way. You didn't always move them back. Sometimes you pulled them forward. Uh, this thing was called Infernal Bomber. I think this saw some tournament play. As an anvil bomb piece. The Hunter Killer was the big one. The the uh, the Blade Miller and the Hunter Killer were the two big anvil born pieces in the tournament scene. Okay, just looking, just looking. Anything jumping out at me here? There's another Baba Yaga hat. <laughs> Sort those out later. Keep an eye on my phone. I've only got a couple of minutes of space left on this recording. Okay, okay. What was this guy called? The guy was just like three legs. Triscalian, yeah. I don't remember that being super amazing. Oh yeah, Mad Monkey Monk. Decent chump piece. Real decent chump piece. Okay. Tossing everything in the box. Heart Thief. I remember this saw some some play sometimes. You didn't skip your spawn phase when ones are rolled for initiative. That could actually be really, really crucial for um, <laughs> Kitsune bans, actually. Skipping your spawn phase was the absolute worst. Another Anvil Born piece, Mobile Command. Never really saw tournament play as far as I know. Rainforest Shaman again. Very critical early piece in the game, kind of phased out with better stuff that came in later sets. Ow. Okay, so I think at this point I'm going to stop the recording and I'm going to go pull this video off and then I will uh, get some of this crap off my table and then I will come back and record the rest. So I will be right back. Okay, I am back. Picking right up where we left off. I cleared a lot of space off of my phone here. We're just going to pick right back up where I left off. I'm looking through these pennies. Oh, yeah, this was uh, Avian Firebrand. I think I remember playing that, at least one of these, at the uh, 25K, the last official Green Blade tournament at Gen Con. Ancient Valkyrie. I remember this piece. Okay. Ah, there we go. Hunter Killer. Crazy good piece. The reason why it was so good is because it had an expensive spawn cost to use its missile, but hey, remember that Blade Miller we're running? Goes great with this. And if you really used the swap drive correctly, you could just make it so hard to evade these things. Set aside the Hunter Killer. It's worth setting aside. Oh, 
Pearl Thorn Castle. Very strong piece in uh, early Dreamblade. Kind of fell out of favor after a while, but still definitely worth a look. Sir Wolven, Dream Lord. Yeah, this is the, the Valor Dream Lord. Pretty good piece, but just really expensive to play. Also, his power left a little something to be desired, so he didn't really turn a lot of heads. Pearlthorn Dragon Knight, kind of the uh, alternate noble dragon. Decent. And set the uh, Dream Lord aside. Okay, yeah, nothing really here. Another Pearl Thorn Dragon Knight. They weren't particularly uncommon. I got quite a few of them. Okay, another one of those AVX Firebrands, which I think saw tournament play, as I remember. Copper Blood Cat, again, another blood cut piece. It was a really great piece, but it was a huge risk, and it did see play. I'm sorry. Because um, it could skirmish itself, and it just had crazy good power for its cost. But that Bloodthirsty, obviously, huge risk. So, I mean, it did see play, and it was a good piece, but, you know, it was very risk-reward kind of piece. Um, sorry if you kind of lose track of what's going on here while I'm it seemed like every color had kind of like a, a pyramid style thing Warfang Keep for Passion and this one Illuminati Pyramid problem is is that just some of them just weren't that good uh really pearl thorn castle i guess heart's blood temple was another one for passion and a pyramid style that? okay i'm sorry let me get some of these in the box out of the way What is this? Oh yeah, soul mine. It was like a heart's blood temple, but it worked for both players, and that's why I didn't see a lot of play because people didn't like the idea of giving their enemy a benefit in exchange for spawn that they spent for a location. You know? Another mobile command. Another Bobby Yaga's hut. Let's see. Let's stuff here. Kind of a mixed bag here. They're seeing what little night fusion I have. Because I don't think I had a ton is showing up here. A lot of Anvil Born in this one. Archangel Tommy with his Tommy gun. Not a particularly good piece. Another Blade Miller. Man, I had a lot of these. They were rare too. They were just so good. I remember running two of them. Nothing like shooting that uh, Hunter Killer missile for absolutely free. This guy saw a lot of draft play. Lord Slobber. He was kind of cheap. But that was about the only thing he did. Sacrifice creatures typically weren't very good. So another Anvil Born piece that I don't remember this one. Bone Carved Idol. Hmm. Turns ones into sevens for initiative. Another Sun Titan. Always a fun piece. So in this box, I'm really hoping to find some interesting stuff. Put that Bloodhawk Barag aside just because it's worth talking about. 
Another <laughs> Baba Yaga cap here. So pieces I don't think I'm likely to find in here. Unwishing Will. I know I had one at one point. I don't know if it survived the fire, and I don't think I ever had more than one. Um, so I wouldn't count on seeing that in here, but you never know. Wicked Carriage. I do remember this one, but I don't think it was very good. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You could uh, have them disrupt it to gain a bunch of blades. I mean, I suppose there are things you can do with that, but... Uh, Fireman. Got better the number of enemies there were. Which, you know, okay, I guess, but, like, why not just run something better that doesn't rely on that? See, that was the real problem. I kind of touched on this a little bit ago. The game just had too many good on paper abilities that they just really didn't put through enough testing and they let them out the door. Oh, there's the uh, Shimmer Sword Sergeant. These pair with the Shimmer, Shimmer Sword Mercs. You could uh, trade them in and out of your reserves for free during uh, your spawn phase. Okay, this piece is worth talking about because early on this piece was considered amazing. It was later discovered that it's one of the worst pieces in the game. Um, so it's a little two spawn chump, right? Five toughness, which is really good. Really good. Or two toughness, five life. Really good. Really hard to kill for a two. But this regenerate ability says if it would be destroyed, banish it instead. That means put it back in your reserve. Sounds great, right? No. <laughs> no, actually, that is really, really bad in this game. Um you actually rely on your early chump creatures getting destroyed because when your creatures get destroyed, you get two spawn for each destroyed creature at the start of your next spawn phase. This creature is just two points of spawn you will never get back because it never gets destroyed. It'll go back to your uh, reserves and then you got to spend two spawn again to bring it into play. That's two spawn you'll never get back. And it can be shown that victory rates are directly tied to total spawn value on the board. So that creature turned out to be one of the absolute worst in the game. Once people realized how to manage spawn effectively, you rely on your early chumps getting destroyed so that you can bring out big creatures. Oh, by the way, unwishing well. <laughs> I, I totally didn't think I had one. It's in good shape, too. This is such a bullshit piece. It's just like a... Play it, it immediately flushes your opponent. Now see, here is the piece that became the best chump in the game. All right? Cannibal Pariah, base set. Three spawn, two with one aspect. It's a two, three, four. Nothing special about it. But when you play this piece, you can play with it however you want, super aggressively, because you are going to get those two spawn points back when it dies. Great piece, great chump piece, great filler got splashed into bands that didn't even play fear just because of how good it was scissors nah forget scissors play cannibal pariah other bloodhawk bear egg i'm sure i had a ton of these i know i had at least three play set Very cool to find an unwishing well in here. I, I don't think we'll find more than one, but hey, who knows? I, like I said, I honestly don't know what state my collection was in last time I looked at this stuff. Ah, oh, yeah, Bloodthirsty Red Cap, the, the namesake of the Red Cap Council. I'm assuming, you know, I always assume that's where they got their name. I mean, I'm familiar with the term Red Cap outside of Dream Blade, of course, but, you know, I'm assuming they got their name specifically from this piece. Uh, chump piece, huge attack power, very common piece to see in tournaments early on. I'm really bad with the camera work. But, of course, it has that bloodthirsty, so if you don't kill something, it dies. So, you know, again, risk-reward. Still, very good piece. You just never elected to attack with it unless you were very, very confident you were going to kill something. Another hunter-killer. 
I guess that's worth setting aside. This one is water damaged, missing its back label. The other one wasn't, right? No, the other one was clean. Queen Crisota, I remember this piece. I think that one might have seen some limited play. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Malefic Steamroller. Such an interesting piece. I remember people actually played this. It just moves one cell forward. It's just like a, a Bright Hammer Avenger. Just rolls forward. Instead of, you know, not quite as good on the attack power. I remember playing this one in a tournament where I pulled it in a draft. Just because I needed a big beater and it was the best I could manage. I think that's probably exactly what that piece is, in fact. Uh, let's see here. So nothing else in here particularly standing out. So big box, definitely some interesting stuff here. Yeah, the, the real fun thing with that steamroller is that, like, you could see it coming, right? There's nothing you can do about it a lot of the time. Like, if the person with the steamroller lost initiative and they moved and did everything second, they just set the steamroller up in front of one of your one of your pieces, and there was very little you could do about it, because <laughs> it, unless you had some way of moving during the spawn phase, which was not entirely common at that point in time, you were going to get hit. Now, it wasn't a huge amount of damage. It was just five dice, but, you know, if you ran two steamrollers, <laughs> it was kind of a fun uh, war band. I know a lot of people played. Okay, so looking in the last box, now we're starting to see right, right at the top, boom, Rage Drake. Maybe my favorite piece in the entire game. Just, oh yeah, this one went through the fire. Put that aside. That's just that's just a little bit of memory right there. Let me get this up here. So now I'm starting to see things like all of my dice, um, the uh, the inserts that had the collection stuff on them. Oop. Piece worth pulling aside. Hard Blood Temple. Ooh, a clean one too. Like, see, here's the uh, insert for Night Fusion that had the the list on it, and you can mark off like your collection as you got them. Very cool stuff. I have one marked out here. What is that? Zungar Wind Dancer? Oh, it was a misprint. It was printed under Madness. Yeah, I rewrote it. Here's the uh, little pad of paper with the maybe track games and whatnot. There's my dice. You see a little gray promo dice here. You got those for playing in tournaments. Big bag of black dice. So you got the gray dice... There's gray dice and blue dice. Now, I got the blue dice for playing in, like, 1K tournaments. The gray dice, I don't remember where I got those. Those might have come from, like, edge tournaments. Well, <laughs> I call them tournaments. That's a very generous way of saying it. People rarely show up to those things. Oh, another Rage Drake, and it's clean. Awesome. Pull that aside. So, yeah, I think this last box here is the gold mine. I think we have found where all the good stuff is. Because it is apparently... Mostly, um, yeah, unboxed stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Look at that. Cool. So, right out of the gate, I can already find some cool stuff here. My first Pearl Thorn Castle, water damage from the fire. Very cool. Oh, yeah, some original set stuff. This is where we're going to find the most interesting stuff right here. Another Kitsune. I guess I should set aside one of the Kitsunis. It's just an interesting little piece of history. Oh yeah, Griffin. Didn't see any of those so far. This is, this is the box that's taken me back the hardest. A lot of base set stuff in here. 
you guys might be seeing something that I haven't even spotted yet. Because I'm kind of looking at just the stuff that's right in front of me right now. It's kind of overwhelming to consider the pile as a whole. So I'm just kind of trying to... I haven't seen any Virtuous Maidens yet. Kind of looking... I remember... I'll, I'll, I'll explain why when I find one. I'm sure they're in here. In fact... No, that's a Faceless King. She's one of those pieces that has a lot of clear stuff. Pearlthorn Gargoyle. Pearlthorn is a common running theme. Another Faceless King. Man, there were a lot of those. Oh, there's a Lunar Handmaiden. Maybe aesthetically one of my favorite pieces. And this is the piece that's on the back of the uh, black t-shirt I have from the 25k tournament. A little bit of water damage. But, like, Yeah, aesthetically one of my favorite pieces. What is this? This looks familiar. Oh, a Luring Succubus. Yeah, it was a, one of the pieces with Lure. Not as good as Infernal Gothic. Another Lunar Handmaiden, also water damaged. Very good piece early on, too. Being able to move creatures during spawn was uh, kind of a rare thing at that point. So let's see here. Still searching, still searching, looking for... The amazing stuff. I mean, overall, the figures were just cool looking. You know, some of them were kind of meh, but you know, just in general, for like a game that came with pre painted figs, they were really, really nice. I know a lot of people use them for DD. Oh, yeah, here's a uh, Thunder Sultan. Yeah, only an uncommon, but a decent piece early on. Corset piece. Okay. More boots. Hey, stags out. So. I remember there was a guy whose name I forget, but I think he was associated with the Red Cap Council or one of those pro teams. Everyone really considered this to be a useless piece, right? It's a zero power piece with a crit ability, right? You had to roll blades to make this thing do any damage. Most people considered this to be useless. There was one guy, and I forget his name. I think he was from Atlanta. He came up to Cincinnati a couple of times, and I saw him at various other bigger tournaments, who was like the only advocate for this piece that I knew of. Hey, there's another one. He swore by it. He swore it was a great piece and that everyone else was just dumb. So, I don't know. I, I never really saw it played at tournaments except by him. Another Lunar Handmaiden. That one's in good shape. Another Pearl Thorn Castle. Again, fire damaged. <laughs> need to hurry things up here because now we're starting to run into battery concerns. I hope I don't have to make this a, a three-part video, although I'll probably just combine all the videos at the end. Here we go. This is one of the ones I was looking for. One of the ones I talked about before, Cyclopean Sprite, one of the few madness pieces worth running. I mean, I'm sure there were other ones, but this one I played and actually it, it it won me a tournament. I won't even lie. Like one specific play got me through to the top four. Otherwise, I would not have made it. And then I ended up winning the tournament. Hawkeye Investigator, very solid piece in the base set. Saw a lot of play early on. Overshadowed by better pieces later, but you know.
Another Angel of Sunrise. A little bit of water damage on this one. I never remember running more of them. Oh, hey, there's another Cyclopean Sprite. Starting to get a little worried. I know I have Scarab War Charms. <laughs> I know I do. Oh, and look at that. Told you. An unbagged alternate painting Scarab War Charm. I knew I had one. I could tell you the story of how I got it, but it's a little depressing. <laughs> An edge tournament that only I showed up to. I don't even know if that's worth anything. And I don't know if I have more than one, to be honest with you. I used to have three war charms. That was standard. Hey, Noble Dragon. A little bit of water damage, but not too bad. See, a little, little wrinkly, but it's still completely readable. Used to run that bad boy quite a lot. Rage Drake kind of took his spot eventually, but, you know, what are you going to do? Aha, here we go. Virtuous Maiden. So, okay, let me tell you a little story about this piece. There was a guy. I couldn't tell you his name. I don't remember him all that well. Another noble dragon. Um, that he modded one of these things. So he took the Valor base off of another piece, like just a common, you know. And he took the Virtuous Maiden. And I think he steamed this sticker off and he replaced the other uh, base with it. And then he put that base beneath this one. But what he did was he drilled a little hole up through the middle into the fig. Because you can see the fig is this clear kind of translucent plastic. And he put a little LED light up in there and a switch off to the side. Now, you can see this uh, piece has an ability that you pay one spawn until the end of the turn, it buffs up our local ally's power, right? So the way he played it in a tournament, like, the big problem with this piece is everyone always would forget, like, when it was active or not. There's, you know, people would do various things, like throw little rubber bands over it. Um, there were, uh, I don't know if I still have any or not, but they, one of the promo things you could get were these little colored rubber bands that you put around the base of your figs, and it would, like, easily indicate whose figs belong to who during a... Uh, a game. I used to have like sets and sets of them. I think they're gone. Or they might be in my old box upstairs. I could definitely check that. Um, but uh, he just had this little LED stuck up in her and an extra thing on the base, but the sticker was still visible on the base, so it was still tournament legal. And a little switch off to the side, and whenever he activated it, he would turn it on, and it had a little watch battery in there to power the led and he, she would light up so you could always tell when his virtuous maiden was active because it would be lit up it was very cool and it made me want to do it too oh another virtuous maiden Ooh, i had multiple of them and my third noble dragon and another virtuous maiden see yeah this is this this is the box where all the cool stuff is mostly undamaged hearts world temple i think that's all three of them Another Kitsune. I'm pretty sure I have more than three of these. Because I've thrown a couple back in boxes at this point. Oh, there's an open alternate Scarab War Charm. It's undamaged. But it's, you know, it is open, but it is the alternate printing. And there is, oh man, I remember this piece. I remember this one I dug out of the rubble on the floor after the apartment fire. I... Look at this. Believe it or not, the sticker is actually in pretty good condition. But, oh man, look at this. Look at how messed up this is. I remember trying to clean them and it just, nothing worked. But it's a playable piece. I wonder if it... No, it doesn't smell like the fire. I, I, I still remember what the result of that fire smelled like. I think that smell will always stay with me. Another stag zealot. So I do technically still have a playset of Scarab War Charms, so that's good. I'm glad to see that, even if one of them is incredibly messed up. I wonder if there's any way to clean it. It's been so long. The 
stickers in good shape, but like. Another Kitsune. I mean, these things were only uncommons, but it was such a good piece. I'm not even gonna set it aside. It's not worth setting aside. Oh, is this a uh, Fleshless Reaper? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. This, this is the guy, okay. This is the guy that broke up the Chess Master game, all right? Like, so during Chess Master, the game was all about board control and using movement abilities not to kill the enemy, but to outmaneuver them. And you would often use uh, Bright Hammer Avenger as a way of, like, m knocking your opponent's pieces around. You often wouldn't kill things with a Bright Hammer Avenger attack, but you would disrupt them quite often, and that would help you gain control of the board. This guy right here was the beginning of the end for Chess Master, because this guy, it looks the same, right? But with Bright Hammer Avenger, he would move into a cell, and he would get to attack one creature in that cell with six dice, right? This guy attacked every creature that ran into him. And let me tell you who you paired with this. Mr. Infernal Gothic, and you just pulled dudes into him. And he just, and the thing was, is that it happened during combat, not your spawn phase, all right? So you would put him there, you would lure guys into it during combat, they would take the ambush damage, and then you could assign combat damage to them because they were in the cell. Didn't matter that they weren't there when the combat started, they're there now. So, oh, it was crazy. It was so crazy. Uh, this guy was the beginning of War of Attrition. And it was the natural kind of transition away from Chess Master. Such a good piece. I even ran one of these guys at one point. And I never really played Fear all that much. I never really liked Fear. Um, I mean, I'd play it during like drafts and sealed box events because you know you got to play what you're handed. But you know, still looking for a Bright Hammer Adventure. I ought to have at least one. Looking at the last little bit here, my third Angel of Sunrise. I know I had a Bright Hammer Avenger. I don't think I ever had more than one, but I know I had a Bright Hammer Avenger. But uh, it looks like it might be lost to time. Very possibly lost during the fire, but it is not here. So... Nothing left right here that is super exciting. So, yeah. That's me going through all my old Dreamblade stuff. Very cool little trip down memory lane. And maybe I'll get these guys organized and on a shelf, and maybe I'll make another video about that here pretty soon. So, I think we're going to call it quits on this video. So, uh, thanks for watching. Okay, so brief addendum here. I knew I was missing some stuff um, when we were going through those boxes. And <clears throat> one of the things that jumped out at me is like, where are the rest of my set lists, right? Because I only saw the Night Fusion one. Um, I went upstairs and had a look around and I found this bag in uh, a box of D&D &D minis that I use, you know, when I was DMing a game. And I found some of my other Dreamblade stuff. So... I made this score sheet laminated at work, <laughs> blew up a little bit with a, a dry erase marker at tournaments to keep track of, you know, score and stuff round around. And you can actually see one of the, uh, I was doing some pairings calculations here, I think. That's probably on there real good now. I'd have to wet it to erase it. Um, original rule book from the core set. Um, I don't know if there's anything particularly interesting in here. But one thing that I did find was my other set lists. So got the Anvilborn set list, the Baxar's War set list, Microsonic Plague set list, and my, I'm assuming, base game set list. Hold on, I'll put this down for a sec while I try to get this thing open. Yep, base. Base game set list. 
So I actually kept these and checked off all the ones of the things I had collected. And there's some minis in here too. So let's have a look, see. Raging Vanguard. I forget what this one's called. All Seeing Something, All Seeing Mage. Yeah. Infernal Preacher, which I seem to recall got some tournament play. Uh, Faceless Stalker. Infernal Bomber. Oh, the Underborn is in here. Okay, and there's some other stuff in here too. So a couple more figs. Canis Horribilis. Um, Lady of the Fang. Still in the box. Um, so really the figs here are not the exciting part. There's nothing amazing here. But what else is in here is kind of exciting. So some of those rubber bands I was talking about that you put around the base of your um, figs are here. Here's some red ones. I don't know if I had enough red ones to ever put. I, th I think I did at one point, but th I think there are like seven here. Um, the problem with these is that I always use the blue ones, and I actually have an example of the blue ones. Right, here's some blue ones. I just kind of wrapped around some dice here, these blue ones. and yeah. uh, I think the problem is I used to have enough of these to you know have two war bands rubber banded up problem was is those war bands were sat on my coffee table when the fire happened and i'm pretty sure most of those rubber bands got lost but here is maybe the most exciting part Some of my 1K top four pins. Very cool. I don't, if, uh, there's no way of knowing which 1Ks they're from. I can tell you which ones. I can name a few offhand. One of them I won in Louisville. One of them I won in Cincinnati. One of them I came in second place somewhere in north central Indiana. I forget the name of the town. I think I had a second place finish in Cincinnati one time. I'm trying to think of what other places I had... Uh, Top four finishes. I don't think the definitely not all of them, but I have no idea what happened to the others. I just wish there was some way of knowing where these specifically came from, but I don't think there is. So yeah, cool, very cool. I'll throw the figs in with the uh, boxes, but I'm glad to have the set lists, and I'm very glad to have these pins. So there you have it.